Good afternoon, I'm Nicholas Qualley. Today marks the beginning of the 67th Legislative Assembly here in the state of North Dakota. But before the hours and hours of making laws kick off, the 33rd governor of the state of North Dakota, Doug Burgum, will give his state of the state address. This state of the state will vary from what we are normally accustomed to seeing. We expect a much smaller audience. Musical acts performing virtually all this due to the ongoing pandemic we've been living and struggling with in 2020 and now into 2021. Well, this afternoon, not only will we bring you Governor Burgum's speech in its entirety, you'll also see lawmakers making their way into the chamber, roll call, and more. Speaking of hearing from lawmakers, you'll get to hear from some of them after Governor Burgum's speech. And they'll be speaking with my inside North Dakota politics colleagues, Josh Minnie and Maddie Beer Temple. The aforementioned program starts back up again this Sunday morning at 1030. Josh, Maddie, thanks for being there for us. What can we expect not only today, but in the coming session? Yeah, that's right, Nick. Uh, Governor Burgum, this is his fifth state of the state address since taking office. Right now, all state uh, lawmakers are in the House chamber behind me. The state's, uh, the governor's address is set to kick off around 1.30. Now, seating in the House chamber will be limited due to COVID-19 guidelines, and Senate Majority Leader Rich Wardner, who I spoke with yesterday, told me the session is going to look a little bit different this year with all of the COVID precautions in place. For one, legislators will be able to vote remotely, and the public can submit testimony online as well as watch live streams that will be saved. So, Wardner says that could make this session a lot more accessible for the public and thereby a lot more transparent. Right, and uh, one topic that will definitely Definitely be something they're going to be talking about is in November the governor obviously had the mask mandate and days after that some lawmakers were trying to overturn that and we spoke with Senate Majority Leader Rich Wardner yesterday during our KX conversation and Wardner said there is no doubt that uh, some lawmakers will be trying to put checks on the governor's executive orders and uh, as you all know, there's, uh, the governor announced that they reduced statewide risk level on the 18th, uh, or he reduced the statewide risk level rather a few days ago, uh, and the mask mandate will continue on until the 18th. Um, and another topic will be the more than $1 million in CARES Act, $1 billion rather in CARES Act funding that the state has gotten, how that was doled out, and how the government will continue supporting those most hurt by the pandemic. And now another change this session is how the 2020 election gave Republicans an even wider margin in the assembly. They now have control by 120 to 21 Dem NPL lawmakers. And one of the notable elections was in District 8 with David Andall, who had passed away prior to the election, sparking that Supreme Court battle headed by the governor that ultimately ended in Representative Jeff Delzer now holding that seat. So it'll be interesting to see see uh, Representative Delzer's seat on the Appropriations Committee play out and how that will work with the governor's budget. Yeah, and just a month ago, the governor uh, gave his executive budget plan. It was $15 billion. It's the second highest plan by a governor. The, the last was, the, the highest was 15.7. That was two, two, 2015 by former governor Jack Derriample and the legislature uh, it was originally $15.7 billion, but the legislature whittled it down to 14.2. Now, a big topic in the budget is the governor's plan to allot $1.25 billion in a bonding package that will go a lot towards infrastructure. And uh, after the governor's speech, we will be back. We will get reaction from lawmakers from both parties. All right, back to you in the studio. Josh Manny, there's a lot that's going to be discussed over these coming days. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you soon. Like we said, we expect the governor to begin delivering remarks around 1.30. That's when we'll join you again for analysis immediately following the address. For now.